School boards were informed by email on Friday that a special fund was being cut by $25 million. It provides programs for students with special needs and from low-income families. There was even a program designed to keep at-risk youth off the street after Toronto's spike in gun violence. Now Canada's largest school board is scrambling to assess the damage. I think most boards had the same reaction, that it was surprising. And we're only on Sunday now, so everybody wants details and none are really available. Some think the timing and method is part of the plan. Normally the government will make an announcement during the regular day. It is a decision that they own. This one feels sneaky. A statement from the province says the fund has a long track record of wasteful spending. This cut comes on the heels of others. Cuts to midwives, the Indigenous Culture Fund, and of course, cuts to French services, which sparked numerous protests. Doug Ford's government says it's been saddled with about a $15 billion deficit by the free-spending Liberals, and tough decisions are needed. It was a deficit. We chose that because we thought that there was a greater investment that needed to be done in infrastructure. That's not the vision of this government, fair enough, uh, but now we need to know what are their, what is their vision. I think we see that the cuts are going to be borne by uh, the poorest in our society. They could be doing it quite cynically, uh, I hope not, but they could be thinking, well, these are people who were never going to vote for us in the first place, so they're really not losing any. We asked the government to clarify how much has been cut overall and where they plan to trim next, but we haven't heard back. School boards hope they'll get a clearer picture on their cuts tomorrow. Natalie Nanowski, CBC News, Toronto. Let's dig a bit deeper on this with the CBC's Queen's Park reporter, Mike Crawley. Mike, how significant are these funding changes in terms of getting rid of Ontario's $14.5 billion deficit? Not at all significant, Rosemary. A drop in the bucket, really. You add up all these cuts, you're talking about something like $30 million. So you do the math, they'd have to find 500 more cuts like this to balance the budget. Look, the, the fact is that the salaries of public sector workers account for the vast majority of the provincial budget. So it's kind of hard to see how they could get rid of the deficit without tackling those things. Okay, so presumably that, that might happen. Where would the Ford government do that? Well, the biggest salary expense is in the greater public sector. So people like nurses, doctors, teachers, police officers. The government's already facing some tough contract negotiations. They couldn't get a deal with workers at Ontario's nuclear power plants. So uh, they've called back MPPs tomorrow for emergency back-to-work legislation. And when it comes to even more militant unions, like the teachers, it's going to be even harder uh, to get deals with them. And those contracts expire next summer. That's probably why he's tackling some of this so early on in his mandate. Ontario's credit rating, though, uh, got hit with a downgrade this week, too. How does all of that factor into this? Well, a downgrade means the province has to pay higher interest on the debt that it accumulates. Ontario already has a huge debt. The province is spending more on interest payments than it spends on any sector other than health and education. So that credit downgrade, it's only going to make balancing the budget even harder. CBC Queen's Park reporter Mike Crawley in Toronto tonight. Thanks, Mike.